Hey guys, it's uh, Abhilash this side. I'm the physics head at the Ask Ideans. And uh, today we are starting with uh, the most important chapter of our 10th grade, and that is light. Before we go deeply into this topic, let's have a bit introduction about this topic itself. So to begin with the most basic question, what is light? If I ask you, so I'm pretty sure you sitting over there must be giving an answer right now that light is something that enables us to see. Well, that's true, but the question still remains unanswered. What is it in the light that enables you to see everything? What light is essentially? Then some of you might be answering, well, it's the form of energy. Well, again, energy Energies are of many types. There are potential energies, kinetic energies, heat energy. So how do we differentiate light energy from others? So well, if you're now finding it pretty difficult to answer that what light really is, then don't be surprised because uh, this has been the most uh, discussed question in the early 16th century till date. And uh, I'll start all the way from the 16th century when the fight started between none other than Newton. Newton, first of all, after giving all the classical mechanics concept, came up with this idea that, okay, now light is something that remains unexplored. I must try and explain it. And he gave his own theory. He said that light is made up of tiny corpuscles, tiny particles, but his theory came out to be wrong. So then came another scientist, Huygen, physicist, I should say, and Huygen proposed his own theory. He said that, well, light is actually wave. And what kind of wave? Well, during those days, we had no idea about of anything about electromagnetic wave or what it is. He just said that you go to a pond and you drop a stone and you see waves and ripples going out. Well, those waves and ripples, what we see are waves. Similar behavior is of the light light is also a wave. So this debate actually kept on moving. Some people call light wave, some people call light something else, but this was finally solved by one of the most famous experiment and that's Young's double slit experiment. Right now we won't be able to explore it because uh, we are limited with our uh, current syllabus. If we get time, we will do it someday later. So right now, what should we consider light as? wave particle or wave particle duality it's both what should we take well all these things are of the later part honestly speaking right now you can just consider light as a ray a ray is coming in and doing all kinds of stuff enabling you to see bouncing off the surface going from one medium to another all these things will be done by this light ray only so for the timing light is just a ray now let's jump into the details of the topics that we have to discuss. So light, if I talk about what all things come to your mind when you hear the word light, so you must also be saying, well, reflection is something that we have heard about the light. A refraction is one of the thing we have seen. Uh, apart from that, you must have also uh, learned something and that is about rectilinear propagation, this very complex word you must be hearing. What is this rectilinear propagation? Well, you must have seen if you take a laser and you point somewhere, then laser actually moves straight. It doesn't go at an angle. A laser, although is a complicated technology in itself, but the light ray behaves similar. Light ray actually moves in a straight line. Light ray never goes in a curved way. All right. Unless you're talking about uh, higher level stuff like black hole, which actually bends light ray. All right. If you don't go to a black hole, light will always move straight. All right. So let's jump into these concepts. First of all, reflection of light we will be talking about. Plane and spherical mirrors we'll be talking about. And then we'll be talking about image formation by plane mirrors. All right. So as you can see, the rectilinear propagation I was talking about. And by the way, there are easy experiments by which you can check also. Like as you can see in the image, you can take multiple cardboards and you can, you know, made, make some of the holes in between in line and then put a flashlight and see how the propagation actually happens. 
All right. So moving ahead. Reflection is the first concept that we are learning. So in reflection, it's pretty easy. You must have learned it also in your junior grades as well. Light ray actually falls at a surface at certain angle and then reflects off at the same angle. Here are a few things you need to keep in mind. There are three important terms. First is the incident ray, as you can see in the diagram, the blue colored ray, that's the ray which is coming in. Then there is this reflecting surface, which is most of the time the mirror, right? But it's not necessarily, you can also bounce light of a metallic surface of any other kinds of surface, only the efficiency of reflection changes. So a plane surface, incident ray comes in. Then how do we know what angle this incident ray is coming in. So then we have another term called normal, another line. Why it is called normal? Well, the word comes from the fact that the normal is always perpendicular to the surface. So if this is our reflecting surface, the normal will be at 90 degrees, the dotted line as you see in the diagram. So that's the normal incident ray comes in, comes at theta angle. Now this theta angle at which it came, we call it angle of incidence. Now we see how the light ray will going to go after this, which is what you see in the red colored ray. The light ray actually goes at some angle theta or we call it angle of reflection. And surprisingly, both these angles come out to be equal. They are always same. Theta I is always equal to theta R. You have to keep certain things in mind both these angles are measured from the normal. So don't equate some other kinds of angle. Always equate the angles made by incident and reflected both by normal only. All right. Now there's something we call law of reflection. Now there is one more important point that comes up in law of reflection. It says that all these three lines that we have discussed about incident, normal, reflected, all these three rays must lie in the same plane. Well, you must have read it as well, but I've seen it, people find it really difficult to understand what it actually implies. So what it actually implies is, uh, imagine this is your uh, incident ray. This is the normal. This is our angle of incidence. And this is our reflected ray. So three rays. This is angle of reflection, angle of incidence. They are always equal. They are saying all of these three lines lie in the same plane. That means all these three lines can actually be draw, drawn on the same paper. They lie in a 2D plane. Any of the ray cannot come out of this plane. Like I cannot have reflected ray coming out towards you. That's violation, law of reflection. It has to be in this plane only, a plane. All three lie in the same plane. Nor can normal come out on any side, nor can incident ray go in and out. That's not possible. So that, that's what lying in the same plane implies. So moving ahead, following law of reflection, when light reflects, then interesting things tend to happen. Now talking about from where it reflects, the best reflection happens from where? So then it happens from the mirrors. And we have three categories of mirror. First is the plane mirror. Plane mirror is something that we all use in our every, everyday life. You see yourself every day, in the plane mirror. Second is the category which we call spherical mirrors. Spherical mirrors have two categories. One is concave, other is convex. So you can talk about uh, convex and concave simply within with a simple experiment that is uh, going in the kitchen, picking up a spoon. When the bent shape like this is facing you, that's a concave mirror. Watch yourself in that, how you appear. It will be pretty different from plane mirror. And then when you see from this side, the bent surface is towards you, then it becomes the convex mirror. So these are the three types. Now we'll see what light ray does while bouncing off from the surface. What is it that enables us to see ourselves? What kind of thing is happening over there? So let's try to understand step by step. We need to understand that when light reflects off something, we actually see its image. Take for instance, image formation 
in the case of like you walk into a dark room you're not able to see anything why are you not able to see anything because there is no light ray to enable you see now suppose you entered the room there is a box kept over there and now you switch on the bulb let's say here is the bulb so the bulb is switched on so what will happen the light ray will going to come from the bulb and fall on this block and then it will reflect of that box and then it will reach to your eyes and you'll be able to see that object so you require light at the first place to observe anything as long as this light was not reflecting not bouncing off that box you were not able to observe it so that's the important criteria light rays enter in your eyes and that enables you to see some of the objects which have their own light which we call as luminous object like this bulb this bulb in itself is a luminous object then some of them are non luminous right non luminous means they don't have their own light so non luminous objects could be like this box which was not visible in the dark because it did not have its own light imagine this box had some hidden light inside so you would be able to see it even in the dark room so that's what luminous and non luminous implies all right now moving ahead the concept you need to take away from here is when light rays enter your eye you are able to observe something so what if we talk about image formation by all these mirrors how we are able to see anything in the mirror so well imagine you are standing in front of the mirror you keep your hand like this now obviously you can directly see your hand that's one view why you are directly able to see the hand because light is falling on the hand and coming directly in your eyes that's how you are able to see it you switch off the light you won't be able to see your own hand so that's one point of view but the other thing that you will notice standing in front of the plane mirror you will also see the same hand behind the mirror in the image right so how we are able to observe that other thing that image inside the plane mirror it even appears that there is some hidden world behind the mirror but in reality there is nothing if we go behind the plane mirror we find nothing so what is happening well again the same thing this was observable because light fell on it came to your eye the image is observable because light fell on this hand went to the mirror bounced off the mirror and came back to your eyes so again i repeat the image is appearing because the light that the hand reflected onto the mirror came back again so one direct view one is via a bigger path going to the mirror and then coming to your eyes so that's why you see two images two images i should not call it two images one is the actual object and the other is image okay so now image formation happens when rays reflect off something and come to your eyes so what way we can understand the image formation well image actually can be formed in two ways first is the real image we can form real image how is a real image formed well like focusing light on a screen like every movie every projector does this multiple rays are incidented on a point like this and that point becomes the real image so the concept behind real image is when rays actually converge actually meet at a point that's called real image then there is another type also called virtual image in virtual image the rays are actually not meeting but they appear to be meeting now how does that happens so imagine that some of the rays are coming like this two rays i am drawing and your eye is here you're observing from this side so when you see these two rays what your brain does is try to find out the source behind these rays and your brain has this inbuilt programming that every time you see two rays just try to find where they come from so what your brain does automatically it 
draws its path. It kind of makes a guess where they might be coming from. And it appears they are coming from here. And then that is what we call as the virtual image. Why we called it virtual? Because in reality, the rays might not be coming from there. Rays might be coming from somewhere here, let's say, like this. And due to some reason, they had a bent. But it made you appear as if the, no, the rays are coming from behind. All right, so that's the concept behind virtual image from where it appears to be coming. And in reality, that's how the image formation also takes place in plane mirror. 